welcome to the Ultimate Life Television Program, brought to you by Pastor Gracia Selassie, a we of Treasure House ICGC, where you are treasured and not trashed. Welcome to the Ultimate Life Broadcast. I'm your host, Gracious Selassie Awe, pastor of Treasure House, ICGC. Jesus said, I'm come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. It's life above the ordinary. It's called the Ultimate Life. On this program, we are presented with the blueprint for the Ultimate Life. So expect to be changed, expect to grow, expect the Ultimate Life. We are continuing with our series on how strong families are built. It's possible to do that. So let's find out from God's Word how to do it. Appreciate the members of your family for who they are. Even though their outlook or style may be, uh, may, may, uh, even though their outlook or style may be miles uh, different from yours. Rabbits don't fly. Eagles don't swim. Ducks look funny trying to climb. Squirrels don't uh, have any feathers. Stop comparing. There's plenty of room in the forest. And, and we need compliment. We need to hug each other. We need to show affection. Speak people up. Build them up. They won't search for it outside the home. They won't search for it in drugs. They won't search for it in alcohol. They won't search for it in illicit sex. The list goes on. The next one is positive communication. The members of strong families know how to communicate and connect with each other. And they spend a lot of time talking and they know how to build each other up positively. Instead of sulking and, and screaming, they positively communicate. A man went to his friend one day and said to his friend, you need to help me. His friend said, what's the problem? And he said, it's my wife. He said, tell me about it. He said, she hasn't spoken to me for three weeks. What shall I do? His friend looked at him and said, I think she's trying to tell you something. How many of you know you shouldn't uh, speak through non-communication? You shouldn't speak through non-communication. You should speak and share, but it should be positive. You, you, should, you should broach your issues. But strong families don't just complain. They don't just moan and, and suck. They bring it out. They have critical conversations. And we need to spend time doing that. Positive communication. Take time. Focus on the family. Uh, did a survey. And they found out that working women said they talk to their husbands an average 12 minutes a day. The Family Life Today magazine did a survey and they found out that married couples spend 27 and a half minutes a week talking to each other. That's less than two minutes. Uh, that's less than 12 minutes. That's less than 12 minutes a day. But this is what they also uh, found. That married couples spend 46 hours a week watching TV. What happens is we get overloaded with responsibility. Then by the time we get home, we've got nothing left to give. So we switch on the flat screen and, and we zone out instead of having positive communication. We've given all the customers and all the clients the positive communication. We need to come home and build. And strong families have positive communication. When last did you speak positively to your partner? When last did you build them up and encourage them? Relationship author Norman Wright has written wonderful books and understands relationships and has helped people. He gives 10 tips for family communication. 10 tips for family communication. And I want to give them to you. Number one, be a ready listener and don't answer until the other person has finished talking. Don't talk over each other. Let the person finish talking before you speak. Secondly, be slow to speak. Be slow to speak. Think first. Then he says, don't be hasty in your words. He says, speak truth and do it in love. The Bible tells us to speak the truth, but we must speak the truth in love. Don't just go about speaking truth. Do it in love. The next point, don't exaggerate. 
Next point, don't use silence to frustrate your family because some people do that. Next one, explain why you are hesitant to talk at this time. Next point, do not quarrel. It is possible to disagree without quarreling. Next one, don't respond in anger. Use a soft and kinder response. As obviously the Bible teaches. That's what the Bible says. Our words must be, I mean, uh, seasoned with grace and uh, full of salt and seasoned with grace. What comes out of our mouth must build people up, not destroy people, not tear them down. They, they must be kind words. He, he goes on to say when you are in the wrong, admit it and ask your mate for forgiveness. Next point, avoid nagging. This doesn't only apply to women, it applies to men too. Next point, do not blame or criticize the other person, but restore and encourage them and edify them. Next one, try to understand the other person's opinion and make allowance for differences. Positive communication is a building block for strong families. The next one is time together. They say that if you ask a child how to spell the word love, they will spell it time. Children need time. And what a lot of parents do is they don't spend time with their children. You hear some parents say this, I don't spend a lot of time with my children, but I spend quality time with them. So in other words, you are never around. But when you are at home for that brief period, you give them all your attention. Actually, that's unnatural. Your child needs to see you doing all sorts of things. Time together is not time together holding hands. You are all sitting down and the TV is off. Please don't get weird ideas. Time together is when you are all in the house together doing stuff. They, they hear you on the phone. They, they watch you on the laptop. They hear you talking to your spouse. They hear you talking to other people. They are with you when you go shopping. You teach them things. They are in the trolley. You push them along. They, they learn as they spend time with you. They watch how you interact with other people, how you interact with friends, how you, you interact with relatives, how you interact with your neighbors. We think time together is sitting with them, drawing with crayons. I don't know whether we still do that these days. No, they need to be with you because you model life for them. We spoke about affection under a different category. This, this is just time uh, learning how to be a human being, learning how to live your life. And it builds cohesion. It builds cohesion and it builds bonds. They surveyed uh, 1,200 uh, teens, the US Today magazine, and they found 76% 76, 76%, 76 of them said they would like to spend more time with their families. It's what they need. They just want to be with family. 25% of them said they've never had a meaningful conversation with their father because they just probably went around. That's just people being interviewed. Josh McDowell interviewed Christian families. He wrote a book called The Dad Difference and he interviewed Christians and he found it was exactly the same. He found that the average Christian, the average Christian teenager in our churches spend less than two minutes a day in meaningful conversation with their father. 25%, exactly the same as the other, said they've never had a meaningful conversation with their dads. We need to make a difference. We need to spend time together. We need to build the lives of, 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 of children. They did a survey and found that in talking to children about their challenges that they face, they, they, they spoke about peer pressure. 
school work, etc. They found one of the big issues that children are experiencing in today's, today's world is a thing called aloneness. Aloneness. They are feeling abandoned. And strong families know how to spend time together and build bonds. It's a sad thing that we wait until we get old and then we wake up. 81% of retired people say, I'm so glad I retired. Now I can spend more time with my family. Why didn't you spend that time with them before you retired? You, you were so busy working. It's, it's interesting. We spend all our time working. We don't, we, we, we don't spend time with our family. Actually, our family uh, or your family, your family, actually, your family needs you more than it needs the money. Your family needs you more than it needs the money. Frank Sinatra's daughter wrote a book about her life with her famous uh, singer father. He sang until he was 81 years old. He did a circuit in Las Vegas. His health was deteriorating. Sometimes he couldn't even finish singing. They take him to a back room and give him oxygen. And she said, Dad, you need to stop. And he said, I can't. I need to provide for my family. I need to make money so the family will be okay. She said when he sang sometimes, he forgot the words and, and they would use a teleprompter. Sometimes he couldn't even read the teleprompter. He was so old and the audience would finish the song for him. And she begged him to stop singing. She, she said, she told him, you remember you told me a boxer needs to know when to step out of the ring, dad, it's time. He said, no, 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 no. I've got to make more money. Eventually he died and his family spent all their time arguing and fighting over his money. It would have been better. It would have been better if uh, they had him instead of his money. Don't wait until you get too old. Spend time with your family. It's a building block of stronger families. The next one is a commitment to honor God in everything. Strong families put God first. They honor Him. They honor Him in all their decisions. Their, their, their values are built around the Word of God. The Word of God is the ground rule for their behavior and all their decisions. They pray. They give. They serve. They tithe. They put God first in everything and they see God bless their lives look at what Proverbs chapter 3 verse 6 says Proverbs chapter 3 verse 6 in everything you do put God first and he will direct you and crown your efforts with success the principle is put God first and the promise is he will crown your efforts with success. So when you put God first, your family gets strong and you experience the blessing. Edgar Hoover, the former director of FBI, said something very, very profound. He said that there is no synthetic replacement for a decent home life. Our high crime rate, particularly among juveniles, is directly traceable to a breakdown in moral fiber, to the disintegration of home and family life. Religion and home life are supplementary. Each strengthens the other. It is seldom that a solid and wholesome home life can be found in the absence of religious inspiration. We don't just need to be together in our homes. That's not the answer to our nation. We need families who put God first in everything. Don't leave that building block out. You are living, you, you are living a hole in the wall of your family. Build that block in. The next point is an ability to cope with stress and crisis. Many families fall apart 
when they have stress or crisis and we live in a world where you cannot escape stress or crisis people face huge work pressures and stress huge school pressures university pressures peer pressures we must learn how to cope with stress and too many families are, are like the army some families are so intense you go home and it's don't do that put it here when when, when are you going to do this sit at the table don't put your elbows there sit straight sit up no wonder the children want to escape, the children want to escape it's pressure a home needs to be a place where you can come and let out all the stress after work or school just chill out tell a joke throw food at each other i mean dress up do crazy stuff a home is a place where you you, you should escape learn how to cope with stress don't you don't add to it at home do something funny some funny stuff take your children out do crazy uh stuff put them in the trolley and drive the trolley fast people in the shop will think you are crazy it's your family your children will always remember that don't be one of those families where everything is intense you know you open a bible with with a marker and say praise god we are going to have devotion the, the children will be sitting uh, they'll be sitting there yawning and, and, and rubbing their uh, eyes. And, and you go, we'll do devotion. We'll, we'll, we'll call on God in prayer, you know, in the name of the Most High God. Come on, be naturally supernatural. Pray with them in the car. When they are eating and they, for, uh, and, and they forget to pray and, and they've almost finished the food, you, you say, hey, hey, let's pray. You know, you still, you still pray including the one in the stomach. You pray over the one in the stomach and the one in your hand. Being, I mean, bring, I mean, bring spirituality throughout your life. Bring spirituality, I mean, throughout your life. Otherwise, they will grow up to uh, compartmentalize their lives and, and, and there will be no fun in it. And, and they will want to escape when they are teenagers. You need to know how to cope with stress and pressure let me read you a scripture in the book of revelation book of revelation chapter 2 verse 13 i see where you live right under the shadow of satan's throne but you continue boldly in my name you never once denied uh, my name even when the pressure was worse when uh, they my tired Antipas, my witness, who stayed faithful to me, who stayed faithful to me on Satan's turf. So we don't run away from pressure. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8 says, We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair. So, we can't avoid uh, the pressure. Proverbs chapter 31, verse 25. Proverbs 31, 25. Talking about the virtuous woman. Her clothes are well made and elegant. And she always faces tomorrow with a smile. Her clothes are well made and elegant. And she always faces tomorrow with a smile. When, when you leave your home, put on your heels, get your makeup on, carry your bag, but put on a smile and show them that you come from a great launch pad. Not that you are happy to escape. I'm out. I'm free. You become vulnerable when you live in a home like that. We need to know how to cope with stress and pressure. There are three things that you do when you are under pressure. The first one is flight. In other words, you run away when there's pressure. Flight. You run away when there's pressure. That, that's what people do. They bail out of their homes. They, they bail out of their families. They bail out of their marriages. So flight, the second one is fight. That's where uh, some homes 
are, are terrible places of pressure because of fighting. Those homes are a terrible place to live. Because when people are under pressure, they go home and they fight with everybody. They fight with their spouse, they fight with their children, they, 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 they fight with every just everybody. So, flight, fight. Third one is faith. You need to go home and say, you know what? Even though we are facing challenges, God can and he will. We, we are going to get through this in the mighty name of Jesus. And you build faith into your family. And it's a good building block. The next point is the sharing of responsibilities. Everyone does their part and no one absconds from their responsibilities. When, when you carry your responsibility, even in the blended family, when your ex pays the uh, support issued, when when your ex picks up the children at the time they should, the children are doing their bit at home, taking out the bin and cleaning the bathroom. Please don't stop your children from doing uh, chores in the house. Get them to do it. Otherwise, one day when they go into uh, the work world, they'll be lazy. If you understand work in your home, that work ethic will come out at work and you'll be a contributor you'll be a contributor and you get promoted and we need to do uh, or, or, and, and we need to all share our responsibilities everybody in the house the children everybody must share their responsibilities that that's why they live there that's how a strong home is built that's how strong churches are built everyone shares in their responsibilities it's not all done by the pastors and the leadership and a strong church is not uh, an accident it's done by design think of a jar of honey in your house do you know how that honey is produced bees fly i mean tens of thousands of bees fly more than 180,000 kilometers one bee in its lifetime visits four and a half million flowers and it only lives for six weeks guess what it's a mother bee and she flies flower to flower to flower to flower back to the hive. When she gets back to the hive, there's a younger bee waiting to receive the honey and puts it into the cell. Then there are other bees who come and fan that honey. And then there are other bees who put wax over that honey. That is where the sweetness comes from. In our home, a mother or father goes to work. They bring back what they earn. The younger ones participate. They cover and protect that home. That's how sweetness comes into a family. That's how sweetness comes into a nation. I want to encourage you today to, with these principles, to, to strengthen uh, your family by using the building blocks that I've shared with you from the word, as well as strengthening your, your, your conviction about uh, family life. I want to encourage you to commit to commit to both your natural family as well as your spiritual family where you belong because both needs to be strong. I trust that today's message has helped you and you've learned some principles that you, you, are, you are going to use. It's not just going to be something you've just had and you're not, not, not going to do anything about. If, if you want to build a strong family, you need God. You need a son, Jesus, to be part of it. There's no other foundation on which we can build than that which is Christ. Jesus is the sure foundation on which we can build our families. The question I want to ask you today is, do you know him? Is he part of your life? Is he your friend? Have you given your life? to him. If you haven't, I want to encourage you to do that. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to pray uh, a simple prayer with you. I'm going to give you the words, you are the heart to it. And I want you to do it sincerely from the depths of your heart. Say with me, Father, today I recognize that I'm a sinner who needs a savior. Jesus, forgive me of all my sins. Have mercy on me. Come into my life. I believe with all my heart that you died for me and you rose again and I confess your lordship over my life 
wash me of all my sins. New creature in you. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me live for you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray this simple prayer, want to know you are born again, you are saved, you are now a child of God. Welcome into God's family. Heaven is rejoicing because of you. And I'm celebrating with you right here for praying that simple prayer and opening up your life to Him. Hey, thank you so much for tuning to this broadcast and I look forward to coming your way next time. But before I sign off, I want you to always know that if you want a life that's going to be as abundant as possible without chaos and confusion, don't do it any other way. Do it by God's will. God bless you and have a great day. Thank you for watching the Ultimate Life Television program. We hope you have been blessed by the teaching. Tune in to our next program on the same channel and the same time next week. You are cordially invited to visit Treasure House ICGC for our Sunday morning church services at the New Horizon Center, South Lodge Avenue, adjacent to the Pollards Hill Library, CR4 1LT. For ministry products and other information, please contact us on 0208-355-3461 or send an email to pastor at treasurehouseicgc.co.uk. You may also visit our website www.treasurehouseicgc.co.uk. Our service times are as follows, Sunday 10 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. and Wednesday 7.30 to 9.30 p.m. You can also download our ministry app, Gracious Awaye, to listen to Pastor Gray's messages from the Apple Store or Google Play Store. May God richly bless you.